Um, so there's this notion of, I don't know if uh, we've discussed this with uh, Edward already uh, in computer networks. Um, when you're discussing the internet, you now know that uh, computers, well, my computer has a name obviously, right? But, but if I'm communicating with another computer on the network, it has no way of trying to make sense out of the human readable name that I've given my computer, right? Um, but, what is, but what it is able to make sense out of is these things they call IP addresses, right? So internet protocol addresses, right? Um, and they look something similar to the numbers that I've, I've highlighted there, right? So these are usually represented using what they call dotted decimal format or dotted hexadecimal format these days. Uh, dotted decimal format is used for, I guess, what they call IP version 4 which is the most widely used version, right? So these numbers here, all of the highlighted numbers here use uh, dotted decimal format, IPv4, right? So you have um, groups of numbers, these are decimal numbers separated by a dot. Um, so using this particular unique identifier for my computer, I can easily com uh, communicate with uh, a computer on the UNSA network or on the internet, right? Um, and it turns out that we use a dotted decimal format so that we can easily read the IP address. But what the computer does behind the scenes is it converts these decimal numbers, for instance, into equivalent binary numbers, right? Ones and zeros, right? Uh, the, the same goes for the so-called IPv6, and surely I, I do hope Edward has told us why we've, we are gradually transitioning into, um, we're gradually transitioning to using IPv6 instead of IPv4. IP addresses are going to have to run out at some stage, right? The IPv4, right? And so, um, version six makes it possible for us to actually have a lot more addresses. And it turns out that, uh, because of the same interesting things that Edward has told us, it turns out that the reason why we are running out of IPv4 IP addresses is because um, increasingly there are more and more devices that are being, that are finding themselves on the internet, right? There's this notion of the internet of things now people are connecting weird things to the internet. You know, you can connect your refrigerator to the internet. You know, you, you are running, I don't know what those devices or gadgets uh, are called, um, but you can literally connect that device to the internet, right? Like when you're running and you're trying to keep track of how fast you are running or how many kilometers you've covered. You know those bands, right, that people use, right? All those weird things are being connected to the internet now, and there's more actually out there. So. The fact that more and more devices and gadgets are being connected to the internet means that we will end up with a situation where we're using up a lot more um, IP addresses. I have to run out of some states. So this is why we are using IPv6. And because IPv6 uses um, um, a slightly larger range, um, the representation of the addresses does not use dotted decimal format, but instead it uses dotted hexadecimal format. Right. Uh, year number four, there's, uh, I think there's, um, what they call, is it uh, computer networking and data communication or something? So you, you get to, you get to appreciate what we're talking about right now. But it turns out that one of the concepts that you're going to cover is this whole notion of subnetting, where you, you create uh, sections within a network, right? So if you look at the UNSA network as a whole, they the people at CICT have actually created uh, what they call subnets, right? So uh, you could have a subnet, right? A particular network dedicated to what? Remember DAS and NAS, the DAS and NAS thing we discussed last time. So you could have a dedicated sub network that is going to, to be forward for storage infrastructure, right? Because you want that particular network to be much faster. You want to isolate it for the more, from the more congested network that is used by the 30,000 plus students at UNSA. It gets even better, right? Uh, if you go somewhere near central administration, I'm sure those people, right, forget about animals being equal here, I'm sure those people have access to an isolated network that is much faster. Much faster than the network that you use when you're connecting to the UNSA network using Edurom, for instance. Uh, and for the few that have come to my office, I've shown you this, right? When we're downloading that one GB 
to know who he is. We're downloading a file, and they were surprised that we downloaded it within like a few minutes, right? It was, uh, it was a huge file, really. It turns out that downloading it on the same user network, but using, uh, on a different sub-network, um, uses a much slower speed, right? So those things are, those machines that, are, that you typically use on a network are located on different regions called sub-networks. Sub-network, okay, sub-networks or sub-nets, right? Um, for you to get the process where you create those sub-networks, you must understand what I'm talking about here, right? And so you get to start playing around with the actual bits, the ones and zeros, actually. It gets even better. Yes, sir. On the IP addresses, do you choose them out? Is it the same impact of the machine or the network provider? Well, it turns out that there are bodies out there that have been uh, put in place to authority figures, right? authorities that have been set up to, um, to issue these, these network addresses. It's an interesting question, actually, because if you look at this particular example, these IP addresses that you're seeing are for a server, right, a server computer system, which hosts uh, our list website, which is incomplete. Uh, but you'll notice that the, this, this is the public IP address that the outside world sees out there, right? So when they're trying to access whatever service we have on the list server, the list.unza.zm server, they access that service using this IP address. But internally, so there's a body out there, right, which issues you with, uh, depending on how large your organization is, they'll tell you to say, um, we'll give you this particular range so you can, you, can, you can allocate IP addresses on your network using this range. But because Unza is so large, my machine right now does not have a publicly accessible IP address. It has what they call an internal IP address, unique within the Unza network. Whenever I'm communicating with somebody else outside of the network, I use one of the publicly available IP addresses associated with the Unza. Oh, yes. So, the, um, I guess it's, is it I, I, I need, I need or I, I need or something? There's an, there's an authority, there's a body, there's an organization responsible for this. Just like there's an organization responsible for registering domain names. Yes, sir? So each individual machine has uh, a different IP address regardless of what you No, you can't. You can't. Each, each, each machine, each computer, whenever you connect to the MTN network or Airtel network using data, you can check this out actually. You have an IP address certificate. You can go to the about of your phone, right? Go to about phone and then you can check your IP address. It's unique and it's dynamic because every time you, you're not connected to the internet, what, 24 seven, every time you connect to the, uh, to the network, obviously like you'll be issued with a new IP address. But we're not here to talk about IP addresses. We're just uh, trying to emphasize the fact that these are applications. No, we're not talking about IP addresses, are we? Talking about number systems, let's not lose track of what why we are here.